perpetual gene therapy for sickle cell disease. It's already working in mice. The pain is just, it's just too much to live with. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Another disease that's getting help from genomic science is one of the most common genetic disorders, sickle cell disease. It usually afflicts people of African and Hispanic descent, but no race is immune. It can cause anemia, intense pain, stroke, even death. Scientists are testing several drug treatments and bone marrow transplants from a matched sibling can cure the disease some of the time. But now genetic scientists believe that gene therapy could be the best solution. Okay, computer. Sickle cell disease is an inherited disorder of hemoglobin in the red blood cells. It causes the normally donut-shaped cells to mutate into shapes resembling a sickle, a tool employed to hew tall crops like wheat also featured on the flag of the former Soviet Union. These misshaped cells fail to flow smoothly and clog the blood vessels. This produces anemia and painful sickle cell crises caused when the organs are deprived of oxygen. These crises can cause damage to the lungs, kidneys, liver, bones, and other organs, including the brain. The result can be fatal. For a long time, scientists have dubbed sickle cell a classic genetic disease. That is, if two parents with the sickle cell trait have a child, there's a 50% chance the child will inherit the sickle cell trait, and a 25% chance that he will have sickle cell disease. The disease occurs when a person inherits a trait for abnormal hemoglobin from both parents. Hemoglobin is a protein in the red blood cells that carries oxygen. <laughs> Chris Lundy inherited sickle cell disease from his parents, although you might not know it by seeing him now. After Christopher was born, my husband and I both were tested. I knew that I had the trait, but I didn't know that my husband had it. And so when the test came back, it said that he had it. So that's what caused him for Christopher to be born with the sickle cell. It wasn't long before sickle cell took over his life. He had his first crisis right before he turned one. And then over the years, you know, he'd just have uh, pain in different places. It started being in his hips and his sides. For 12 years, Chris endured the pain caused by sickle cell disease. When I would first notice that my side would kind of tighten up, and I'd be like, oh boy, what's this? So it's just kind of. Like you try to hold your breath and make sure that the oxygen in your body goes through. And then when you exhale, you're like, it hurts. It hurts again. And so then it like travels from one side to the other side and you just can't do anything about it. Doctors at Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta suggested the only known cure for sickle cell disease, a bone marrow transplant. It's a procedure that can only be performed if the patient finds a donor who is a perfect match usually a sibling. Luckily, Chris had a younger brother, Chavez, who became his bone marrow donor. Bone marrow is a factory for red blood cells and it contains blood producing stem cells. Because Chavez's blood genetically matched Chris's, the transplant was worth the risk. So Chavez's bone marrow was harvested and carefully injected into Chris's veins. Once it's there, those bone marrow stem cells find their way to the bone marrow of the, of the recipient, and then they grow up and start producing red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, all the parts of the blood that they're supposed to. And these would be non-sickle red blood cells. Sometimes bone marrow transplants don't work, and the new marrow is rejected in a form of immune response called graft versus host disease. But the Lundy brothers were lucky. Chris overcame graft versus host, and today he is sickle free. Before the bone marrow transplant, I get tired quick. But since the bone marrow transplant, I feel like that 10-year-old, again, playing basketball, just going around shooting free throws and shooting three-pointers and layups and stuff like that. 
you know, I'm just a part of him. I'm just in him, running through him, and my blood is trying to take over his sickle cell. And it's over him now, and he's doing great. But now it's easier to keep up. Regular checkups monitor Chris's progress, and apart from possibly needing hip surgery someday, he'll likely live a normal life. All right. So compared to how you were before bone marrow transplant, how do you feel now? Have you been growing more since transplant? Uh, a little bit. Now I've gotten taller, but not as tall. Okay. But I feel a hope. I feel better getting taller. All right. And you got the beard, <laughs> <laughs> the mustache, right? And that's like been since it. transplant too. Yes. Yeah. So Chris is very lucky because he's one of the few people who've had bone marrow transplant to cure their sickle cell disease. So there are hundreds of thousands of people across the world with sickle cell. Only maybe 200 have had bone marrow transplants. The good news is that there are a number of potential treatments on the horizon. One drug, hydroxyurea, greatly reduces the pain that sickle cell patients suffer. And recently, doctors successfully used cord blood from newborn's umbilical cords to treat sickle cell instead of blood from a matched donor. Still, these are only treatments, not cures. But that may be about to change. Researchers at Harvard and MIT are successfully using gene therapy to cure sickle cell disease altogether. So far, it works perfectly in mice. Dr. Philippe Labousse led the team of researchers who devised what could be revolutionary therapy. I think that we and others uh, are moving forward to a day uh, in which uh, gene therapy could now be really useful for patients. And I think for sickle cell disease, we've seen a dramatic change in the past few years between what we could not do before and what we can achieve now. Gene researchers around the world created a mouse model with sickle cell disease. Just like in humans, the red blood cells sickle, causing the traffic jam problem in the blood vessels. Researchers isolated an anti-sickling gene that reprogrammed stem cells in diseased bone marrow to produce healthy, non-sickled red blood cells. The breakthrough came when Labouche's team found the right means, or vector, to deliver the anti-sickling gene to the stem cells. They used a lentivirus, a virus derived from HIV, without the harmful parts as their vector. The message got through. Here's how it works. The bone marrow from a mouse with sickle cell disease is removed and treated with the anti-sickling gene exposed to the lentivirus in vitro and injected into a genetically identical mouse with sickle cell. The new marrow takes over and the diseased mouse is cured. These are uh, photographs of, uh, of a blood smear. Uh, the top one shows uh, red blood cells from a sickle uh, cell disease uh, transgenic mouse that had not undergone the gene therapy treatment. And you can see that the vast majority of these red blood cells show, show the abnormal sickled shape. However, in contrast, uh, the red blood cells shown here on the bottom from a sickle cell disease mouse that had undergone the gene therapy treatment show a much more normal rounded phenotype or shape. So the question is, can it work in people? What we, we found in mice now is a prelude to clinical trials. It is widely expected that if gene therapy for sickle cell disease works, there will be no need anymore for allogeneic bone marrow transplantation. It would be a procedure of the past. And to patients like Chris Lundy, that sounds like a good idea. Any way to get rid of sickle cell is just great because the pain is just, it's just too much to live with and bear. So any kind of technology to get to get rid of it is is great. The secrets of the sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.